Welcome to Mount Zion Baptist Church. Join us as we celebrate Black History Month. Today, we are celebrating the life of Bessie Coleman. Bessie Coleman soared across the sky as the first African-American woman pilot. She was often called Brave Bessie or Queen Bess because of the dangerous tricks she performed while flying. Born in Atlanta, Texas on January 26, 1892, Bessie Coleman was one of 13 brothers and sisters. When she was 18, she attended college in Langston, Oklahoma. In 1915, Bessie moved to Chicago and became a manicurist in a local barbershop. Her brothers were serving in World War I at the time, and it was their stories that made Bessie want to become a pilot. She applied to flight schools all across the United States, but no one would accept her because she was African American and a woman. When she heard that women could fly in France, she decided that she would learn French and apply to flight schools there. She was eventually accepted at an aviation school in France and received her international pilot's license in 1921. Bessie quickly became popular in both the United States and in Europe. She gave speeches and showed films of her air tricks in churches, theaters, and schools. She refused to speak anywhere that was segregated or that discriminated against African Americans. She toured the country giving flight lessons, performing in flight shows, and encouraging other African Americans and women to learn how to fly. Bessie died in a plane accident at age 34 years old. Her death was heartbreaking for many. Bessie Coleman saw aviation as a way to empower black people in America. Even after her death, she continues to inspire African American women and future pilots to fly even higher than she had ever dreamed. I do. 
Mount Zion family and friends, 
we thank you for joining us this morning for our virtual worship experience. Our call to worship, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us pray. O most gracious and holy God, Lord, we thank you for another opportunity that you have made for us to worship and praise your holy and righteous name. Lord, we ask that you would bless this worship experience, that it would be all that you would have it to be. Lord, we pray for the one that will bring the word, Lord. We ask that you will use them on this day to speak to your people. Lord, we need to hear from you. God, please bless your people, Lord, collectively and individually. This is your servant's prayer. It is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we do pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Our sacred scripture for this morning is John 3.16. And I will be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. And it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the word of God for the people of God.
wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. Hands up, hearts open wide as the sky. We lift you high. We lift you high. Hands up, hearts open wide as we cry. God, we lift your name high. And then we cry out. Let all the other names fade away. Thank you, God. Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your place Let all the other names fade away Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place 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 Jesus, take your place. 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 I want to encourage you wherever you are that no matter what you're dealing with right now in this season, be it depression, fear, anxiety, loneliness, hopelessness, loss, suffering, don't give up on God. God is still in control. He is still in the midst and he will show up for you. God is a great God. He is a merciful and a gracious God. He will see you through. So be encouraged today. And no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We are conquerors in Christ Jesus. So lift your hands to the sky, hallelujah, and begin to call out his name, Jesus. For there is no other name greater than his. Jesus. 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 Yes, God. Let all the other names fade, God. Let all the other names fade. Let all the other names fade away. Let all the other names fade away Until there's only you Let all the other names fade away Jesus, take your place Jesus, take your God bless you, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today, uh, this new month is February. It's the love month. And so this month, we're gonna be talking about love. Um, I want you to please join me 
in the New Testament as we look together at John chapter 3, verse number 16. And today we're reading from the New King James Version. And there you'll find these words. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, you know, since the beginning of the year, we've been talking about living in wisdom and the requirements. Well, living in wisdom requires love. So we continue in that same vein. But today, we want to take another look at John 3.16. We want to take another look at John 3.16. Let me begin by saying I can't even start to tell you how many times during my ministry I've had people say to me, I've heard that sermon before. And they said this, this solely because they heard the scripture, not the sermon. And they think when they hear a familiar scripture, that that means they've heard the sermon. Well, I thought I'd better tell you that today because the truth is you may be tempted to tune me out and not hear what I'm about to share with you because we're using a familiar scripture and you heard me preach from it before more than one time. So join me now in John 3, 16, New King James Version, and let's take another look at John 3, 16, a familiar passage. Let me remind you again, you've not heard this sermon before. When I think about this unforgettable passage, and it really is unforgettable, I suppose it is perhaps one of the most widely known passages in the entire Bible. In fact, I think every Christian knows this one. And if they don't, they should. It's been called the gospel in a nutshell generally because it's a concise summarization of the doctrine of the Christian faith. That's John 3.16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, there are a lot of people who don't give a lot of time to the first uh, portion of this verse. They give most of their time to the second portion. Well, we're gonna give all of our time to the first portion, where it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A lot of times people rush through that sentence to get to that whosoever or whoever, depending on the translation you're reading. I suppose this is so well known that if you just put it up somewhere, as a matter of fact, it was so popular at one time, even pop culture adopted it. Um, you remember when the football player, uh, TiVo, would wear it under his eyes. It was everywhere. There were people wearing t-shirts and everything else because it became very popular for a season. Well, I want you to know it's still popular. It's been popular for 2,000 years and it shall remain. This single verse is one of, if not 
the most loved verse in the Bible. Therefore, there have been many who have called this a golden text. Well, I don't wanna call it a golden text. I call it the platinum text. But that being said, it might surprise you to know that there are a lot of people who still misunderstand and misrepresent this verse, even with all of its popularity and simplicity. But let's see what simple lessons we can glean from this one verse, at least the first part of it. This verse tells us the whole gospel story in one sentence. Let me set the scene on the night that this was shared. On the night that this was presented, this little simple statement, Jesus was having a conversation with a particular Pharisee. His name was Nicodemus. Let me paint the picture a little bit for you. In the text, it's getting late. The shade of evening is falling. And there's a hush over the city of Jerusalem. As on similar days, the residents longed for the evening shade so that they could just get a break from the heat of the day. It's a normal night, but really not so normal when you think about it. Why? There's a man named Nicodemus looking for Jesus. He knocks on the door where he believes Jesus is. Look at him now, trying to get in. Aren't you glad that if you knock, he'll open the door? Well, Nicodemus got in. He wants to speak to the Galilean rabbi who says he's the son of God. He wants to speak to Jesus himself. This is the scene as Nicodemus pays Jesus a night visit. When he arrives, he says, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God for no one can do these signs you do unless God is with him. This is an important statement because Nicodemus comes, but he doesn't come faithless. He comes with faith, believing that Jesus is who he says he is. And yet on that same night, Jesus introduces to him this strange, unusual, and perhaps somewhat confusing concept of the new birth. Their dialogue leads them to John 3.16. And let's get right in there. There are three things I want to lift for you and then I'm going to be done. The first thing I see is the source of God's love. The source. Listen at it. For God so loved. That's it. Let's stop right there. We stop where everything starts. That's with God. When we see God, it is the designation of the divine nature of the Father, as in Ephesians 1.3. However, it can also designate the nature of Jesus the Son or the Holy Spirit. But in this case, it's used to reference the Father. This reminds us that the source of love the real source. It's not your friend. It's not your lover. 
It's not the person around the corner. It's God. It's God's supreme love. That's the source. Yes, God. God's love isn't some mere emotional quiver that some folk have for other people. It's an authentic interest in you and everything about you. Because this is the source. God's love motivates us to freely seek his grace because he and he alone is the source of our love. It comes from God. Nowhere else. No wonder John once wrote, we love because he first loved us, loved us in 1 John 4.19. God is the ultimate source of love. That's not the only thing I see. I see the source of God's love, but then I see the size of God's love. Listen to what it says. For God so loved the world. Park right there. For God so loved the world. Sometimes people want to know how much you love them. I don't know why, but they ask that question. Here we are shown how much God loves us. It's right there. Here's the size of God's love. Here it says, God so loved the world. Now the Greek word used in the original language is cosmos, which points us to the entire universe the entire universe that God created. Well, often the world stands for all the people. This is a figure of speech, but when we look at it from this perspective, we look at the container, which is the world and not just the contents of the container. The passage therefore emphasizes how big the universal love of God really is. God loves the whole world and he has enough love for everybody. He wants all to be saved, but he will not force his salvation on anybody, but he desires for us to be saved. The love of God is so massive and monumental. No one has to be left out. That's a lot of love. I don't know a lot of people with a lot of love like that. That's big love. And God has big love for you and for me. Nobody has to be left out. Isn't that a great blessing? You don't have to be left out. I don't care what you've done, where you've been, how you feel, who hurt you, what has happened. It doesn't matter. There's enough love for you. Well, here's the last thing and I'm done. We not only see the source of God's love and the size of God's love, but then we see the share of God's love. Okay, God's love is big, but how much do you get? Listen at the verse again. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Hold it right there. We see the share that God's love gives. You do remember that an attribute of God is his giving nature. So 
We see that God love God loves, but He gives. He gives that love. He has given us life. He's given us gifts. And He's given us His love. God really is the source of all good gifts. And the greatest gift he could ever have given is Jesus Christ. And there's enough Jesus to go around. Seven centuries before the birth of Christ, Isaiah announced a child is born, a son is given. And Paul says later on, thanks be to God for the unspeakable gift. It's quite apparent that even when a gift is made available, it's not effective unless someone takes the gift. Jesus is that gift, brothers and sisters. Oh, there's a hymn I love, the hymn, he lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Well, if I could have free license right about now, I'd change the words from he lives to he gives. He gives. Christ Jesus gives today. He gives us a share, enough of his love today and every day. Yes, Jesus gives. Well, let me close now, but I'm gonna close with a story. There was a man who uh, went out on a boat with his friends on a lobster trip and he caught a hundred and 25 lobsters. Yes, I know, it's a lot of money, right? 125 lobsters. When he got home, he had a freezer full of lobsters, more than enough to last him for an entire year. The day after he got, his, got home, he was there, a friend came by and he asked his friend, would you like a lobster? His friend said, absolutely. And the friend was delighted to receive that lobster. The man got so excited about the idea of giving his friend a lobster that by the end of the week, he had called up everybody he knew and given away 122 lobsters. Well, the man ends up with only three lobsters left for himself. He had such a great time giving away lobsters, he didn't even mind that his supply had dwindled down from a year supply to just a meal. A few days later, he went into his garage and he was attacked by an awful smell. When he got out there, he followed his nose to his freezer and he opened it up and he discovered the electricity had gone off and his remaining three lobsters had spoiled, rejected, no good. And as he cleaned up his mess, he was feeling a little sorry for himself. But then he remembered all the lobsters he had given away and it gave him great joy if he hadn't shared the bounty that he had. All of it would have been wasted. But because he was willing to share, it didn't go to waste. Well, brothers and sisters, God's got enough love to share so it doesn't go to waste. Thank God today. Just another look at John 3.16, simply because living in wisdom 
requires love. Amen. We thank God for his preached word that transforms lives. We were truly blessed today and we pray you will remain with us for a very important part of this service. And that is the invitation to discipleship. This is a very special opportunity for you to accept the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to become one of his followers. Brothers and sisters, God allowed his only son to die a painful death so that we can live. I promise you, you do not want to live in this world without Jesus Christ. It is absolutely essential that you accept him right now. You can do that wherever you are. In fact, the Bible states in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you desire to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, please pray with us at this time. Heavenly Father, I come to you admitting that I am a sinner. Right now, I choose to turn away from sin, and I ask you to cleanse me of all unrighteousness. I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross to take away my sins. I also believe that he rose again from the dead so that I may be justified and, may, and be made righteous through faith in him. I call on the name of Jesus Christ to be the Savior and Lord of my life. Jesus, I choose to follow you and I ask that you fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit. I declare that right now I am a born again child of God. I am free from sin and full of the righteousness of God. I am saved in Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer with me and you were not saved, please be assured that you are saved and we warmly welcome you into the body of Christ. If you are interested in uniting with the Mount Zion Baptist Church, please call us at 703-979-7411. You may also send an email to info at mountzionbaptist.com. Again, if you are interested in uniting with our fellowship or need additional information, please give us a call at 703-979-7411 or send an email to info at mountzionbaptist.com. Peace and blessings unto you. God bless you. It is offering time now at the Mount Zion Baptist Church. If there is any time we get excited, it's at offering time. We know that due to our inability to gather, we are unable to receive our offerings in the traditional manner. However, we invite you to take advantage of this opportunity to give today. There are four ways to give to the Mount Zion Baptist Church. First, you may give via the EasyType app on your cell phone. You can easily download the app to your smart device to give. Second, you may text to give via the Easy Tithe app by calling 703-372-9244. Again, you may text your offering to 703-372-9244. Third, you may give online by visiting our website, mountzionbaptist.com. Click on Online Giving, then click on the Easy Tithe logo to give. That website again is mountzionbaptist.com. Click on Online Giving and click on the Easy Tithe logo to give online. Lastly, you may give by mailing your tithe and offerings to the Mount Zion Baptist Church, PO Box 6216, Arlington, Virginia, 
22206. Again, you can mail your tithe and offerings to the Mount Zion Baptist Church, P.O. Box 6216, Arlington, Virginia, 22206. Remember, although we are unable to meet traditionally, the need for your gift remains. Any way you bless the church, we will be satisfied. God bless you, and thank you so much for your support. We appreciate your giving and generosity to God's work. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for enabling us to give and to support this church. Bless each giver and the offerings received. Direct our priorities as we strive to accomplish your work. Give us wisdom and empowerment to be good stewards of the tithe and offerings received so it advances the kingdom of God fruitfully. Amen. Again, thank you for your generosity to the Mount Zion Baptist Church. Good morning, Mount Zion family and friends. It is my pleasure to welcome our visitors on this morning. We hope that something was said or done that will bless you and carry you throughout the week. If you're without a church home, we invite you to join the Mount Zion Baptist Church, the growing church where everybody is special, for we are a kingdom-focused church. To learn additional information about our church, please visit our website at www.mountzionbaptist.com. Dot com. Additionally, please feel free to follow us on our various social media platforms. You can find us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Again, we thank you for visiting with us on this morning. God bless you. Our thought for the week, rest on God's promises, stand behind yours. Amen. Good morning, Mount Zion. My name is Chauncey Strong, and I'm here with my lovely wife, Stephanie Dula Strong. And we want to invite you to join us next Sunday for Marriage Emphasis Sunday. Hey, that falls on Valentine's Day. All right, that's great. And listen, so... Uh, we want to invite you to join us as we celebrate uh, marriages. And our theme for this year has been uh, keeping your marriage strong even during the pandemic. And our speakers for the hour will be our very own Minister Merrick Deans and his lovely wife, Reverend Tiffany Smith Deans. Yes, yeah, so we are inviting you all. Please come join us for the 10 o'clock service. Uh, and not just uh, you, uh, invite a married couple that you know to be a part of this service as well. So we look forward to seeing you uh, to see what God has to say to us during this pandemic on how to keep our marriages strong. See you next Sunday. Take care, Mount Zion. Bye. Bye-bye. We thank you for joining us this morning for our virtual worship experience. We hope that something was said or done that will bless you and carry you throughout the week. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, my brothers and sisters, and we pray that you have a blessed week.